I'm going to have to interrupt you once again. You see, we want to know how all this began. This wedding. This plan to spend a lifetime together. <laughs> well, I, I'm very awfully interested in how big things like that begin. You know how it is. You're 21 or 22 and you make some decisions. And, uh, Whoosh! You're 70. You've been a lawyer for 50 years. And that white-haired lady beside you has eaten over 50,000 meals with you. How do things like that begin? Well, George and Emily, they're now going to show you their conversation when they first found out that, that, uh, as the saying goes, uh, they were meant for one another. Mm. But first, I want you to try and remember what it was like to have been very young. And particularly the days when you were first in love. When you were like a person sleepwalking. You didn't quite see the street you were in. You didn't quite hear everything that was being said to you. Oh, just a little bit crazy. Are you trying to remember that? Now here at uh, 3 o'clock, they're going to come out of high school. George has just been elected president of the junior class. And since it's June, well, that means he's going to be president of the senior class all next year. Emily has been elected secretary and treasurer. I don't have to remind you how important that is. Yep. There they are. Coming down Main Street right now. I can't, Louise. I've got to go home. Oh, Ernstine, Ernstine. Can you come over tonight and do Latin? Isn't that Cicero thing the worst thing? Tell your mother you have to. Goodbye. Goodbye, Helen. Goodbye, Fred. Goodbye! Can I carry books home for you, Emily? Why, uh, sure, it's not that far. Excuse me one second, Emily. Say, Bob, if I'm a little late, just start practice anyway. Give her some long high ones. Goodbye, Lizzie! Bye, Lizzie! I'm awfully glad you were elected, too, Emily. Thank you. Emily, why are you mad at me? I'm not mad at you. You've been treating me so funny lately. Well, since you asked, George, I might as well tell you right out. Goodbye, Miss Corcoran! Bye, Miss Corcoran. What is it? I don't like the whole change that's come over in the past year. I'm sorry if that hurt your feelings, but I've got to tell the truth and shame the devil. change? What do you mean? Well, up to a year ago I used to like you a lot. And I used to watch you as you did everything. Because we've been friends for so long. And then you began spending all your time at baseball. And you never stopped to speak to anyone. Not even your own family you didn't, George. And it's a fact. You've gotten awful conceited and stuck up. And all the girls say so. They may not say it to your face, but that's what they say about you behind your back. And it hurts me to hear them say that. But I've got to agree with them a little. And I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings, but I can't be sorry I said it. Um, I'm glad you said it, Emily. I had no idea such a thing was happening to me. I guess it's hard for a fellow not to have faults creep into his character. I always expect a man to be perfect, and I think he should be. Well, I don't think it's possible to be perfect, Emily. Well, my father is, and as far as I can see, your father is. There's no reason on earth why you shouldn't be, too. 
Well, see, I think it's the other way around that men aren't naturally good, but girls are. Well, you might as well know right now that I'm not perfect. It's not as easy for us girls to be perfect as a man because us girls are more, more nervous. I'm sorry I said all that about you. Emily. Now I can see it's not the truth at all and it doesn't matter anyway. Emily. You want to go get an ice cream soda or something before you go home? Sure. I would. Hello, Stu. How are you? Good afternoon, Mrs. Slocum. Well, hello, George. Hello, Emily. What do you have? Why, Emily Webb. What you been crying about? Oh, um, she just had an awful scare, Mr. Morgan. She almost got run over by the hardware store wagon. Everybody says that Tom Hawkins drives like a crazy man. <sighs> Get your glass of water, Emily. Oh, gosh. There you go. Well, I'm telling you, you got to look both ways these days before you cross Main Street, and it gets worse every year. Now, what do you have? I'll have a strawberry phosphate. Oh, no, no. Emily, come on, have an ice cream soda with me. Uh. Two ice cream sodas, please, Mr. Morgan. Two ice cream sodas, yes, sir. Yes, sir! There are about 125 horses in Grover's Corners as I speak to you this minute. <laughs> State Inspector was in here yesterday. And now they're bringing in these automobiles. Uh, the best thing is to just stay home. I, I remember when a dog could sleep on Main Street all day and nothing come by and disturb him. Well, there they are. Enjoy them. Yes, Mrs. Alice, what can I do for you? They're so expensive. Oh, no, Emily, don't think of that. We're celebrating our election. And then, you know what else I'm celebrating? No. Well, I'm celebrating because I've got a friend who tells me all the things that ought to be told to me. George, don't think like that. It's not true, you're... No, no, you stick to it, Emily. I'm glad you spoke to me the way you did. But you'll see, I'm gonna change. You bet I'm gonna change. <laughs> Emily, can I ask you a favor? What? If I go away to State Agriculture College next year, would you write me a letter once in a while? I certainly will. I certainly will, George. It certainly seems like being away for three years, things could get a little out of touch. Maybe letters from Grover's Corners wouldn't be so interesting after all. Grover's Corners isn't very important when you think of all of New Hampshire, but I think it's a pretty nice town. Well, the day wouldn't come when I wouldn't want to know everything that's going on here. And I know that's true, Emily. Well, I'll try to make my letters interesting. You know, Emily, whenever I I meet a farmer. I, uh, I ask him if he thinks it's important to go to agriculture school to be a good farmer. Why, George? And, yeah, and some of them say it's even a waste of time, that you can get all that stuff anyway from pamphlets the government sends out. And, well, Uncle Luke is getting old. And he's about ready for me to take over his farm tomorrow if I could. Why? And like you said, 
being gone all that time, meeting new people, if anything like that can happen, I don't want to go away. I guess new people aren't any better than the old ones. I bet they almost never are. Emily, I think you're as good a friend as I've got. And I don't need to go to other places and meet other people in other towns. But, George, maybe it's very important for you to go and learn those things like cattle judging and soils and those things, of course. I don't know. Emily, I'm going to make up my mind right now. I won't go. I'm going to tell Paul about it tonight. George, wh I don't understand. It's a whole year away. Why do you have to make a decision right now? Emily, I'm glad you spoke to me about that. That fault in my characters. What you said was right. There's one thing wrong in it, and that's when you said that for a year I wasn't noticing people. You, for instance. Why, you said that for a year you were watching me everything I did. Well, I was doing the same about you the whole time. Well, I'm sure I always thought of you as the one of the chief people I thought about. No, I always had to make sure where you were sitting on the bleachers and who you were with. And for three days now, I've been trying to walk you home, but something's always gotten in the way. George, life's awful funny. How could I have known that? I thought you... Look, Emily, I'm going to tell you why I'm, why I'm not going to agriculture school. It's because, you know, I believe that um, when you meet someone that you're very fond of, you know, someone who is very fond of you too, and likes you enough to you know, think about your character. and Well, I think that's just as important as college is, even more so. That's, that's just what I think. I think it's awfully important, too. Emily, if, if I do improve and make a big change, would you be, I mean, I mean could you be? I, I am now. I am now, and I always have been. Yes, this is an important talk we've been having. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, give me a minute, and I'll uh, walk you home. Oh, um, Mr. Morgan, I'm going to have to uh, run back home real quick and get the money to pay you back for these. Why, George Gibbs, do you mean to tell me... Well, yes, but I have reasons, Mr. Morgan. Uh, look, here's my, um, my gold watch. You can keep it until I get back. That's all right, George. I trust you. <laughs> It'll only be five minutes. <laughs> I'll trust you ten years, George. Not a day or... You gotten all over your scare? No. Oh, Emily? Yes, Mr. Morgan, it was nothing. I'm ready. Now we can get on with the wedding. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad we started again. Um, yeah. It was a good reset. Um, 
you really you really hit those moments that I had noted you on the first time and I told you I had liked. I told you how much I liked it um, on Tuesday when you did it. Um, but I'm glad that we, we reset it because when you said to him, you know, I have to tell the truth and shame the devil, I could see this time it was Emily being courageous and saying something that could potentially jeopardize this this connection um, and you know that's the very definition of, of, of courage is doing something when you're scared to do it even though even though we're doing a um, this is an acting class and this is from a play but this version that we saw today is definitely more of a film technique technique type of rendering of the scene but it is your responsibility for me to be able to see your face yeah um, because, you know, when you're working on, on, on film, or, and even more so on television, it goes very, very quickly. Um, and they might not have time to make the adjustment, or they may, they may be thinking about the next difficult setup that they have to do. And it's like, let's get through this dialogue scene. And they don't realize until they're really in the editing room that your, sh your face is so shadowed. So what am I going to do as an editor? Right. I'm going to cut to her. I'm going to cut to when when you're speaking. I'm going to cut to a two shot, and when she's speaking, I'm going to cut to a I'm going to cut to a close up, and you end up suffering because you you technically were not astute or aware enough to find your light. It is your responsibility, guys, particularly in film and television, to find your light, to hit your mark, to speak clearly enough so that you don't end up re-recording your dialogue. You seemed a lot more at ease and a lot more, um, uh, you felt more like the storyteller when we started it again. Did you feel any difference? No, oh, a little bit, yeah, it's always different, yeah. Yeah, it, it just, I, I don't know, it seemed. Yeah. No, there was more connection with the audience and doing stuff, I think so. I think when we started it again, what I got from the stage manager this time is that that you're if you're talking to the audience, it's like you're going to really enjoy this part of the play. <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts of the play. Yeah. Um, speaking as a stage manager, yeah. just the way you said it's three o'clock, they'll be coming down the street. At, there they are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and 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 it was just there. There was more um, glee, if you will. Yeah. And then when Mr. Morgan came on, Mr. Morgan was a little bit more formed this time too. Mm -hmm. That uh, that the he was having more f you had you had more fun with him, mm -hmm. and you had more fun when you came back in too. There was even that that touch. It's like why George Gibbs, <laughs> and, you're, and you're like, oh, crap. <laughs> so I, I enjoyed Mr. Morgan more today than I did on Tuesday, and I loved him on Tuesday. One of the things that's so successful about the play is that there's no sort of, um, there's no trying to update it. There's no, um, there's no political correctness about this. These are the way, this is the way it was. And that's why I said, how many smiles do I have on the faces? Because even though it's a throwback, isn't it wildly romantic? It just is. It's just so beautiful. And that's lost today. We don't see that. It's text messages and Facebook and relationship status and <laughs> just, you know, pure, pure teenage dying for each other. Not that teenagers don't die for each other, they do, but there was an innocence about this that made it wildly romantic and fun to watch. Fun to watch. Big, big success as far as I'm concerned. Pleasure to, pleasure to see this scene. Thank you guys for doing it. And we're going to do... Uh,